Before we get started with all the fun, I have some ground rules. We have rules around here that I want to lay out for you. It's better if you know the rules. It makes things less frustrating. Studies do show the less frustrated you are, the more you're going to learn. So let's start with a couple of ground rules. But remember, technical information is about to be disseminated, so please stay alert at all times. Let's start with the name of this thing. Photoshop for photographers. I've got some assumptions I'm going to be making. Number one, since this is a class for photographers, I'm going to assume that you are at some level of photography. You got a camera, you basically know how to use it, or you've got a lot of experience. That doesn't matter, but you know something about photography in terms of the camera. Next, I'm going to assume that you have some general knowledge of Adobe Photoshop. You know your way around in the program. You can find where things are. Now, you don't have to be an expert, but you have some working knowledge of the program. If you don't, Infinite Skills has some excellent courses on nuts and bolts in Photoshop. Next, this is not necessarily what I would call version specific. But let me explain that. We will be using the latest, greatest version of Photoshop that has come off the cloud. And we will be talking about some of those features. But in reality, a lot, if not most, of what we're going to be doing are things that have been in Photoshop for years and years and years. So I would say it's not necessarily version specific, but we will be talking about some of the newer features. Next, what I call nomenclature. One of the most frustrating things I find left in Adobe Photoshop. Now, Adobe, and I applaud them for this, has made the program so seamless when you look at it that sometimes you can't tell if you're on a Mac or a Windows. However, if I say to you Mac versus Windows, and then I say press the control key on the Mac, it's the command key, or sometimes we call that the Apple key. The Alt key is called the Option key. Enter key is called the Return key, and the Backspace key is called the Delete key on a Mac. I fail to understand how they can create a program like this, seamless between Mac and Windows, and they can't agree on the names. But when I do talk about them, if I say, well, let's open a file in Photoshop and press Control O, I will also say, and that's Command O on a Mac, Control O in Windows. There may be a time or two I skip that, but I think most of us are savvy enough to understand the difference. But I have one more question for you. What keyboard are you using? What does that mean? Well, this is a question more for my Mac people out there than my Windows people. I have fielded questions, and they go something like this. Andy, you said to press the command key or the option or the return or the delete, and those keys aren't on my keyboard. I don't know what's going on, but they're not there. So I did a little bit of research, and in every single case, 100%, they were using a Windows keyboard, which you can do on a Macintosh. So for whatever reason, what happened is they went to a computer store, and they picked up a keyboard, but it was a Windows-based keyboard, USB, and they plugged it in. If you are one of the people that are working on Mac, but you have a Windows keyboard, which is fine, then you want to listen to the word window when I say Control, Alt, Enter, and Backspace, not Macs, because you won't have those keys. Not a big deal, but just remember that is a possibility. Last, let's talk about the exercise files real quick. Now, you're going to get exercise files with this particular program. I can't think of a better way for you to work through something if you've got a problem by using an example, and the example is exactly what I am using. So I give you all of these examples. What I would want you to do, and it's a want, not a need, is create a folder and put them in there. Call it working files. Then place that folder on your hard drive and then access the files through Adobe Bridge. Now we're going to be talking about the Adobe Bridge. It's a very powerful tool that you can download from the Creative Cloud, or if you have an earlier version, all the way back to the first version of Creative Suite, you probably have it. Although it's not a requirement, I think it's a great way to organize your files so that you can use them and get to them quickly. That's it for the ground rules. That's it for the speech. Let's move on.